Welcome students, parents, and friends of Augusta County to the first episode of Connecting with Augusta County Schools. My name is Eric Bond and I proudly serve as your Division Superintendent. Please join me throughout the year as we take a closer look at our outstanding school division. We would like to welcome our very first guest, uh, Mrs. Tina Karakoff. Mrs. Karakoff serves as our Assistant Superintendent for Instruction and Technology. Ms. Karakoff, welcome to Connecting with Augusta County Schools. Thank you for having me. So in Augusta County, our, our motto is every child every day. Uh, I like to say every child every day with equal amounts of determination. Uh, so I think it goes without saying that we are all about instruction in Augusta County Schools. That being said, um, just give our listeners a general overview of your job responsibilities and your department's responsibilities and duties. So in instruction, our number one mission is to provide support for teachers, administrators, staff in order to enable all students to learn. That's our main goal. So some of the things we do is making sure that um, we communicate all of the standards, both national as well as state, professional standards that are expected for teachers. We work with all curricular areas to make sure teachers are informed of those expectations. And then we promote effective instruction and best practices for the classroom and make sure teachers have the materials and the resources that they need to help all students learn. So certainly with 10,500 plus students that we have in Augusta County, you can't do this alone. So tell us a little bit about your department. How is your department organized as far as the instructional side of things as well as the technology side of things? Instructionally, I have several teams within my larger instructional team. I have an elementary team. Um, those three are Laurie Bowser, Andrea Regal, and Jane Wright. Um, Jane Wright serves as the director of elementary instruction, and they work largely with our elementary schools. I have a secondary director. Forrest Bergdorf, and she and Angie Dietz work largely with our curricular areas at the middle school and high school levels. The third sector of our team serves almost all of the levels. So um, Lisa Floyd serves with our mentorship as well as our guidance counselors. Michael Tetto oversees all of our CTE, career and technical education also have Sarah Melton, who works with our PE, Music, and Art. Wendy Chandler is our Director of Testing, and she also does some different things with assessment and graduation. And Mr. Mike Howdyshell oversees our Technology Department, and that includes both our technicians, who work on a lot of the hardware and the infrastructure in our buildings to keep our technology up and running, and then Mr. Howdy Shell also oversees our ITRTs, instructional resource teachers, who work in all of the schools with teachers to coach them and assist them with the integration of technology in their instruction. Tell us a little bit about um, some of the major initiatives that you and your staff and our principals and our teachers are working on as far as instruction and instructional technology uh, in Augusta County Schools? So there are many changes that have been coming into play just recently with education in general in the state of Virginia. One of those is the move from the focus on standards of learning tests into more of our performance-based assessments. Um, this has resulted in the reduction of the number of tests that most students have to take throughout their career in school. Um, and then it's really helping us to look at what are some of those performance-based assessments that would be more meaningful as we prepare students for their future. That sort of brings us into the profile of a learner. So the profile of a Virginia graduate talks much about the skills and attributes that students will need in the future because we fully recognize that the workforce and the needs of the workforce are changing each day. Um, and we need to be able to prepare students for that. So as a result, we have worked in instruction with an innovation team to really develop a profile of an Augusta County learner. Tell us a little bit more about the, the profile of an Augusta County learner. So in our profile of an Augusta County learner, we have identified six different attributes. We want our students to be skilled in each of these areas. So we want all of our students to be healthy and resilient. We want them to be personally and socially responsible. 
want them to be communicators and collaborators, critical thinkers, creative thinkers, and we want them to be responsible citizens. So all of those skills and attributes that fall under those six areas are what we need to embed in our instruction every day. And there are many, many ways that we can, can start to work on that. The result truly is deeper learning. It's not just a situation, no longer are we just memorizing the facts for them to be able to regurgitate on a test. We want them to truly be able to apply those skills and do something with that knowledge. We also fully recognize that most of that knowledge is out there and easily attained through technology today. So no longer do students need to memorize all of those facts. We want them to understand the concepts and then be able to apply them. So obviously with uh, Virginia, the Department of Education and Profile Virginia graduate, that runs parallel. It sets some kind of some parameters up what we want to do for Profile of an Augusta learner. Mm -hmm. And more specifically, kind of the coordination between what we really want to define teaching and learning in Augusta County is more this notion of students really having a deeper understanding and a deeper learning and being able to think critically and problem solve to prepare themselves yes. for future jobs. Um, you know, we in Augusta County kind of have a little saying, we want our students to have the three E's. Is that mm -hmm. fair? Yes. Um, the three E's being we want them to either to be enrolled in a higher ed or a institution of higher education uh, we want them to be enlisted in our military, or we want them to be gainfully employed. Um, so having those three goals, the, the profile of an Augusta learner kind of funnels them into those career pathways, whatever they may be. And we like to think that um, when they graduate, they do have those skill sets that you just mentioned in our profile. Um, but most importantly, being able to think critically, think creatively, and to be able to be problem solvers. Uh, that's absolutely true. And I think we this is a huge shift. Um, previously with SOLs, it was more of memorization of facts and then being able to show that you have learned those facts. Now we are looking at moving into giving students more authentic experiences, giving them some choice in how they apply their learning, um, really looking at big ideas and being able to apply them to areas of interest. And as you said, to be able to select pathways that they want to study, we fully recognize that not all jobs will require for your college education. Sure. So it's really important for us to work with our community and our business leaders to make sure we are preparing our students to be able to fill those jobs. And we're fortunate here in Augusta County to have many areas in which our students can go to work. They just need to be ready for those positions. Sure. So kind of coincide with this is an initiative that we've had in Augusta County for several years now, and we are well on our way of completing that goal of our, what we call our one-to-one -one initiative, mm -hmm. or where we have Chromebooks for our, our secondary students mm -hmm. um, that not only they use on a daily basis, but now they can even take them home and use them uh, at home. T yes. Tell our listeners a little bit about how that program evolved and kind of where we are today and kind of some of the purpose behind behind that one-to-one -one initiative. So in the beginning, it was really our goal to be able to have as many devices in the hands of our students as possible. And so it was a gradual start. We were able to supply our schools with carts of computers that they had access to be able to pull those into their classroom for instruction. As technology has become more and more embedded not only in our everyday lives, but also in our instruction, it was apparent that it would really be a great idea for these students to be able to take these computers home at night and be able to do much of that work. That really opened up many doors for collaboration. Students are able to collaborate with each other through the computer, um, whether they are in the same classroom, whether they are sitting down at the same time to work on a project. So we've started in the seventh grade, providing all seventh graders with a Chromebook. We've been able to do that for several years. We've also gotten to the point that after about three years, it's time to refresh that Chromebook. So in 10th grade, we refresh those devices. Each student receives a new device, and then they use that device through 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. Right now, all seventh through 10th graders have a Chromebook um, that they have access to. 24 hours a day, all year long. We even encourage them to take it home over the summer to continue to use that. Um, and because 
now ninth and 10th graders have those devices at the high school. Most of our high schools had enough Chromebooks that they could actually assign a Chromebook to the 11th and 12th graders as well, if needed. So for all intents and purposes, we are pretty much one-to-one seventh through 12th grade in our high schools. Well, I would even take it a step further. We're probably one to one K-12 because some of our elementary um, got the mm -hmm. benefit of some of uh, uh, slightly used Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. While they're in the school or in mm -hmm. their classroom, they pretty much have access yes. to a Chromebook. But a one-to-one um, -one ratio, probably. Exactly. Schools, different elementary schools have used different ways of employing those computers in their schools, but um, many schools have continued to add to their number of Chromebooks. The county continues to provide those as well. Um, so we've, we've talked about, you know, do we want to bring that one-to-one -one program down to sixth grade or maybe even into the elementary schools? So that'll be something we continue to discuss moving forward. As the division superintendent, one of the most frequently asked questions that I get in my role really is about how do you make the decision to call off school when you have inclement weather? Um, in your role as assistant superintendent for instruction and technology, what, what's probably the most frequently asked question you get from either students, teachers, parents, or community folks? I do a lot of work of setting up the calendar for the coming year. And the number one question that I'm asked is, when's the first day of school? And usually we get asked that by about September of the year before. So about September, October, we get a lot of, so when's next year's first day of school? You bring up an interesting topic. <clears throat> um, our calendar has changed over the last four years. We've gone to kind of an alter, what we call an alternative calendar where we start a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. but that allows us to end our first semester prior to the winter break. So what is the process that you go through uh, when you start developing the calendar for the next school year? When we go through the calendar each year, we look at when do those holidays fall and we have to work around the holidays. Um, we work with Stanton and Waynesboro to try to align our calendars with them since we share some regional programs. And then we really start to look at how can we get 90 school days in for each semester where can we give students as well as teachers those needed breaks for teacher work days, parent conferences, and all of those other traditional breaks that we have, and just trying to make the most sense, um, trying to keep the semester as consistent as possible so that students as well as teachers and families can have that consistency in the building. So historically, our calendar's been 180 school days. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we try to maintain that uh, every year, 90 days first semester and then 90 days second semester. Yes. Well, that's, that's very interesting. And I, I'm sure that is a very frequently asked question. So one, one last question for you. Okay. And you may or may not have an answer. Um, but what's a fun fact that maybe some of our teachers and students and parents and our listeners just aren't aware uh, for instance, uh, you know, a fun fact from my office is I always say that we're 971 square miles in mm -hmm. Augusta County. We're the second largest geographically in the Commonwealth. So I'm not sure a lot of our citizens know that. Mm -hmm. And that poses some interesting challenges and opportunities for us, especially when it comes to the transportation and facilities and so forth. So maybe you have one, maybe you don't have one. What, what would be a fun fact maybe out of instruction and technology mm -hmm. that maybe some of our people aren't aware of? I guess one fun fact might be that um, we do work 12 months, and so we do work through the end of May, June, and July, and I think most people have the perception that that's sort of our downtime, and I would counter that that's probably the busiest time for us of the entire year, and that sounds crazy. But my team works really hard to close out the school year in May. We usually have some type of curriculum work, professional development going on the 1st of June. We get ready for our administrators retreat, which is usually pretty heavy with professional development and other necessary meetings. And then we really work hard on getting things ready for teachers to come back the end of July. Well, Ms. Karakoff, thank you for your leadership. Uh, thank you for what you do for our students every day in Augusta County, and we appreciate you being on our very first episode of Connecting with Augusta County Schools. Thank you. It's a privilege to serve our schools um, and our county.
So before we go, you mentioned earlier your most frequently asked question is about deciding on snow days. Are you going to answer that? Well, that's a great question. Um, you'll have to stay tuned. Our guest on our next episode will be Mr. Tara Lafon, who is our director, executive director of transportation. And that will be one of many topics that we'll be talking about on our next episode. Big thank you to our listeners. We appreciate your interest in Augusta County Schools. Uh, we will hopefully continue these podcasts uh, throughout the course of the year. We'll have many, many guests lined up. And you can find our future broadcast on our Facebook page for Augusta County Schools as well as our website. So again, I appreciate your time and appreciate you listening. Thank you.